Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode 12 of Feed the Beast Infinity Light for Minecraft 1.10. Last episode, we were working on a little bit of forestry bees. We got ourselves a scoop, collected some bees, started breeding them together uh, in order to try and set up a system to where we could get unlimited lava using just forestry bees and some of the machines within forestry as well uh, to actually extract the lava from these simmering combs and essentially... What I've been doing since the end of last episode is mostly more of the same. I've done a couple of cycles of the Sinister Drone, which is in here. We've got the Sinister Queen uh, turning its sinisterness into these simmering combs. And I've also done a little bit more breeding. Wow, that thing hurts like a beast. Flip an egg. Uh, it doesn't seem to, uh, our armor doesn't seem to actually have any effect whatsoever in protecting us against that Queen Bee. Uh, we should probably look into getting that apiarist outfit pretty soon if we're going to do too much more bee work. But... As I was saying, I have done a little bit more breeding, and that is to get this guy over here, the Imperial Queen. Now, thankfully, it's not too hard to get, especially uh, if you have the Mutatron and the Mutagen producer. It mostly just takes a ton of time whilst you wait for your Redstone and Glowstone to turn into Mutagen that can then be used by the Mutatron. Uh, so exactly the same as last episode. If we look at the recipe for the Imperial Queen, it is a Noble and a Majestic drone. And if we look at Majestic, it's Noble and Cultivated. And if we look at Noble, it's common and cultivated, which are both drones that we saw in the last episode. So I'm not going to go through how you make both of those again. But essentially, the reason why I've made the Imperial Queen is because if we look at the production of the Imperial Queen, the Imperial Queen produces a dripping comb, but more importantly, it produces the Royal Jelly, which can be used to make the production upgrades, which are used in the industrial apiary to increase the production of the drones. You actually get more uh, product out of each and every cycle than you normally would. So for example, uh, if we go back to that real quick, if I press U on my industrial queen and I go over to the royal jelly, you'll see that the production upgrade uh, says it adds 20% to production and you can install a maximum of eight of them. And so what we can do is we can craft eight of these up, put eight into each industrial apiary, and we're going to get a bunch more of the simmering combs, a bunch more royal jelly if we use it on the uh, the imperial queen here. But uh, basically, it increases the amount of stuff that you get from the bees if you have it inside of the, uh, the industrial apiary. I I'm going to go to sleep real quick because we are having a bit of an issue still with power to where when the night falls and our solar panel uh, over there turns off the power starts to go down things start to flicker and the frame rate just tanks incredibly uh, so what i'm going to do to kick off today's episode is first of all we're going to put the imperial queen in here now I did look into the lifespan upgrade because if you remember correctly, last episode, I wasn't quite sure how the lifespan upgrade worked exactly because if you put the lifespan upgrade in, it does mean that the Imperial Queen will turn into an Imperial Drone and an Imperial Princess quicker but I wanted to know if you would get the same amount of product from it. And it turns out that you actually don't. So, for example, if we come over here, you'll see that right now this Sinister Queen is out of power. And we'll get to power in a second. But it's produced one simmering comb. And basically, the number of simmering combs isn't set per cycle. Like you, do, you don't get a certain amount of simmering combs every single cycle. And so if you put the lifespan upgrade in, it does get you the princess and the drone faster, and it's good for breeding, and it's good for getting more um, more drones like we were doing last episode. But if you're just interested in the product, in this case, the simmering comb, you will actually get less if you put the lifespan upgrade in. So it's not really worth putting it in at all unless you want to get yourself a bunch of drones or unless you want to do some breeding like we were doing last episode. Uh, so we're not going to be using too many of these unless we're doing some more breeding later on down the line. Instead, we're going to be putting in a bunch of those production upgrades uh, once we start getting some royal jelly from this Imperial Queen. And actually, before we even get there, we are going to grab uh, the automation upgrade because what this is going to allow us to do is essentially what the name says. My game's frozen. There we go. It's fixed. Uh, essentially, what the name says, it's going to allow us to automatically keep cycling through the bees. So right now, once the Sinister Queen turns into a Sinister Princess and a Sinister Drone, if I want to put it through again, I have to manually go up to the industrial apiary. I have to take out uh, the princess. I have to take out the drone and I have to put them back into the slots on the left here. But when we put in the automation upgrade, once the queen finishes, it will then take any princesses and any drones from in this section over here and transfer them back over to the left to automatically keep renewing that cycle so that we can get an unlimited amount of simmering comb that just automatically keeps coming and keeps working forever and ever as long as there is enough power in the 
industrial apiary. Uh, so we're going to put one in here as well because we do want a bunch of royal jelly. And what I'm going to do with the first like batch of royal jelly that we get is put it back in with that uh, industrial queen, which I don't think is called an industrial queen. Is it industrious? I keep forgetting the name of this bee. What is it called? It's the Imperial Queen. I'm going to put the first batch of production upgrades in with the Imperial Queen because that's going to allow us to get even more royal jelly even quicker. And so uh, I'll probably leave the production upgrades in there for a little bit. And once we've got like enough royal jelly to get a bunch of production upgrades, I'll probably take the Imperial Queen there out of that uh, industrial apiary and replace it with another Sinister Queen if I can get one uh, pretty soon because we don't need like an infinite amount of royal jelly anytime soon. So so let's have a look. Do we have what it takes uh, to make this guy? I think we should. We should do another one of those upgrade frames. And then once that's done, uh, we are missing the copper gear, but it shouldn't be too hard. I did make a little bit more bronze between episodes. So if we do something like that, that doesn't quite get us uh, the production upgrades because we are a little low on sugar, which uh, I did try and solve between episodes by setting up a little bit of a sugarcane farm over here. I put down some water and planted some sugarcane, which as you can see is doing pretty well. I also think uh, that we do have a little bit more lying around in the system because I have harvested that a couple of times uh, since I first planted it. Let's have a look here. Do we have any more? Yeah, we got 12 sugar cane, which is great. Uh, so I'll go ahead, craft all that up. That's going to get us our first production upgrade. And that takes us to our next issue, which is power. Because you'll notice that both of these APOs right now do not have any power. And you'll notice I haven't brought the, uh, the sterling generators with me to this new area. And that is because between episodes, uh, I went into a single player world. I have got the, uh, the, the sterling generators here, but I went into a single player world and I tested all of the like really basic generators, all of the generators that turn coal into power. And it turns out that the best one is this one over here, the furnace generator Mark 1 from Simple Generators actually produced almost twice as much as the sterling generator and quite a bit more than, than all the rest of the ones in the pack as well, including the one from Draconic Evolution, which is significantly more expensive than the one from Simple Generators. It's actually uh, surprisingly easy to make. It's, a little bit more expensive than the sterling generator. It requires a little bit more redstone, but uh, the amount of power it produces in comparison is significantly higher. So, uh, the recipe for this guy is four stone, three iron, one furnace, and one block of redstone. So it does have a bit of an extra cost there associated with it because of the fact that it uses a full block of redstone. So you need nine redstone for every single one of these as opposed to, I think it was just like one or two redstone uh, in the previous versions. So uh, let me go ahead and quickly whip up one more furnace here. And we're going to put all of these down by the uh, the new apiaries that we got outside and also uh, i tested these in a single player world as well and they do in fact work with the basic universal energy cables which is kind of fantastic did i make any more steel between episodes i did good stuff because we do need a couple more of these basic universal cables so let's grab uh, like maybe 16 of those 20 should be more than enough we might need the configurator which i already have on me actually okay never mind so uh, if we go back over here i don't remember if this automatically outputs to the mechanism some cables but if we do this this and this we can then go ahead and run this up the wall and around to our apiaries which are here and I think like, oh, it's going to be right there isn't it, next to the soul sand. So if we do something like this, that is going to go ahead and should start to provide power to both of those once we fill it up with coal. Uh, thankfully, we do have a bunch of coal thanks to the quarry, which has been running over in the mining dimension, which is actually uh, not running right now. And we'll get to that in just a second. It is offline. But uh, let's go ahead and grab three stacks of coal. Um, we did have a lot more coal at the beginning of last episode. We've really kind of amped up the amount of coal that we've been using over the past two episodes. But let's go ahead and just throw a stack into each of these. And you can see that each one produces 64 redstone flux per tick. And if you look at the bottom there, it shows you how long it produces it for. So each one produces 60 RF per tick for 25 seconds. Uh, if we keep one coal and head on back over to the sterling generator, just for comparison, uh, the amount of coal that we wasted last episode by using these sterling generators instead of using the furnace generators, this thing produces... Uh, 20 RF per tick, and I think it even tells us how long it will cook it for uh, if we hover over the little flames here. So we put this in, it lasts for 40 seconds, so a little bit longer, but produces less than a third as much RF per tick, which is ridiculous. The new generators are so much more efficient and would have taken us uh, significantly less time to uh, to get all the mutagen that we needed if I'd have used those last episode instead of the sterling generators. But what is done is done, uh, and so now these should be running pretty nicely once they get some power. It doesn't look like they are getting power, which is probably due to the lack of a configurator so uh, let's make sure this is set to 
energy, which is that one. And then we'll go pull, pull, and pull. There we go. That's the bees activating. It's starting to kill me. Let's get out of here pretty quick. I want to test that. Yep, that's working fine. All right. <laughs> Let's leave. Uh, did I put the uh, production upgrade in the apiary there? I think I did. But I'm a little scared to get close. Let me see about getting, like, over on this side. I don't know if this queen actually hurts me either. I did. I put it in there. So that should be producing uh, more of that royal jelly and more of those combs than it would be normally, which means it shouldn't take too long to start getting more of those production upgrades. And then once you've got a couple of them, they kind of spiral out of control and it's really easy to get a bunch more for all of the other industrial apiaries. Uh, and so that's that. That's that running now. Um, all we need to do now is actually set up the system that's going to allow us to turn those simmering combs into lava. And what I'm also planning on doing is setting up kind of the base system that we're going to need for creating the deep resonance crystals so to make this if we go back to simmering comb and we press u uh, on the simmering comb here uh, what do we need we need to get ourselves a centrifuge and i think it's a squeezer uh, i think we squeeze the phosphor here with either cobblestone sand or dirt we do so we need to get ourselves a centrifuge and a squeezer so thankfully uh, i don't think any of the forestry machines are particularly hard to make and uh, you can see this one is just two glass six copper and then one sturdy casing which is just some more bronze so that guy is actually super easy to make and then I'm fairly certain that the squeezer is actually a very similar recipe. Yeah, it's the exact same recipe, but with tin instead of copper. So let's grab ourselves another sturdy casing here and get the squeezer. And basically, all we need to do now is if we take this down uh, to the room beneath uh, the apiaries, and also we are going to sleep again because otherwise uh, my frame rate is going to go all over the place. Um, but essentially, we're going to put these down underneath. And for this episode, we're going to start putting all the simmering combs in manually. But next episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and automate the entire system of getting the simmering combs out of the apiary into the centrifuge into the squeezer and then in to the tank beneath the the furnace for the deep resonance setup we're going to try and do all of that with an rf tool system next episode uh, the reason i'm doing it next episode is because it's a whole setup that we're going to try and do with uh, some new stuff that was added to rf tools in minecraft 1.10 but for now uh, let's go ahead and let's move this real quick so i'm thinking that uh, if we put this torch down we'll put this down like there, I think. Let me just do a quick F7 check to make sure mobs aren't going to spawn down here. They are not. Let's put down, like, the squeezer here and the centrifuge here. They're not going to stay here for particularly long. They do both require power. You can see uh, that these can pull power directly from the furnace generator. They don't need any kind of cables. Uh, and so now, if we were to quickly head on back up here, try not to die to the bees, let's grab ourselves a simmering comb, and let's come on down. Oh, don't die, don't die, don't die. Okay, we're fine. Just barely. All right, so we put all of our simmering combs into the centrifuge. That's going to start to work through them and turn them into phosphor and what else do we get we get something else from them as well i cannot remember uh, but then once you've got that we can then go ahead and put those into the squeezer with for now i guess we can use this piece of dirt that we've got on us but in the future we're probably going to end up using cobblestone just because it's easy to automate we can get a nice unlimited source of cobblestone pretty quickly but you can see right there we got a bucket and a half of lava just over a bucket and a half of lava fairly quickly actually it can produce this stuff pretty quickly and like i said once you get this fully set up it should work pretty quick we might end up with a few more of these centrifuges if we get some more um, sinister bees if we get like a bunch of them uh, we might end up in a situation where uh, we need more of these centrifuges so that we can process all of the simmering combs uh, but that is for the future and this is the basic setup for what we're going to use to generate lava so now that that's set up let's head on back inside and let's set up the basics of our deep resonance system did we make any of the stuff last episode i don't think that we did if we go to at deep resonance we need to make ourselves a smelter and then two tanks so the smelter uh, we're missing some nether brick do we have any netherrack we do so let's go ahead and smelt some of that up and whilst we're waiting for that to smelt up for the nether brick let's go ahead and see if we have what it makes to make these two tanks i think we should we're missing a little bit of glass which is fine because we have just enough sand to make the remaining glass so let's go ahead and throw that into the furnace there uh, whilst we're waiting for that to smelt up uh, let's go ahead and put this down i guess like right about here should work for now and we should probably also make another one of those furnace generators real quick uh, so that we can actually power this thing because i'm pretty sure as well as requiring lava uh, the smelter does also require some form of redstone flux so uh, i think one more furnace should get us everything that we need to make that it does uh, let's go put the stone in there how are we doing on this we got more glass let's go and make another one of those deep resonance tanks which is going to go a Above the smelter so we'll take all this stuff and we're gonna put the generator right about it's gonna go there 
We're not going to keep this here, though. This is going to go one block up from where it just was. And to get that there, we're going to have to put down another block in its place. It would be nice if that other block could be the smelter that's supposed to go there. There we go. That gets us the smelter. So if we put this down on top of the tank here and we put down the other tank on top here, this is kind of the basic setup for making the resonating crystal liquid or the RCL as it's referred to in the book. And like I mentioned last episode, the way this works, we put lava into the bottom tank. We put the, the resonating ore, which I think we have quite a bit of now uh, in this chest over here. We do. We've got 37, uh, which is nice. So we're going to put that into the second slot. We're also going to need a little bit more coal uh, to get this furnace generator running as well. You'll see if we come in here, uh, there is a slot on the left there for redstone flux. If we put that uh, into there, that's going to start to fill up that redstone flux buffer. And if we put the, uh, the resonating ore in the middle, all we're missing now is a source of lava. And also, like I mentioned last episode, uh, you want to try and keep the, the tank at the bottom about half full at any given time because keeping it at half full gets you the purest liquid possible. It's not as pure as it can be and we can do stuff uh, after the fact to make it even more pure but um, just doing this process here, if you want to get the best liquid out of it possible without doing any of the stuff you want to make sure the tank at the bottom is about half full and like I said, I'm not going to automate it into today's episode. We're going to work on that next episode with RF tools but uh, just to kind of show you guys how this works, what I am going to do is quickly do a couple of trips backwards and forwards and actually, you know what? It would probably make more sense if I were to quickly grab a mechanism tank and fill that up instead of going backwards and forwards over and over and over again. So uh, let's go ahead and make one of these. They're actually super easy to make. They don't look it by these recipes, but uh, all we need is four iron and four redstone. I'm still not quite sure why it doesn't give you the exact recipe, especially with mechanism stuff. It kind of just shows you a bunch of similar mechanism recipes for stuff that's kind of in the same area. It's real weird. Uh, I'm not quite sure why it does that, but uh, with this, I think we should be able to put this into bucket mode. If we can find uh, the mechanism key binding, I'm not quite sure what it's at by default. Whereabouts is mechanism? Uh, the mechanism item mode switch key is great. Of course it is. We've been using it for our configurator. Uh, so if you press shift and then whatever key you've set your mechanism item key to, uh, mine's set to grave, which is the one below escape on your keyboard, and you can change it to bucket mode, and then you can just kind of right click as if it were a bucket, and that liquid's going to get stored inside of this tank. So you can see we can hold 14 buckets worth uh, in the tank here. We now have 30 and 14 so uh, let's head on back here now it does take a little bit of time and it does take quite a lot of ore as well do we have any more of that uh, that resonating ore in the system we do we've got 30 more i think that should be enough for us to get ourselves at least one crystal uh, if we go ahead and start filling this up down here what i'll do is i'll put this down next to it make sure you take it out of bucket mode first because otherwise if you right click with it in bucket mode it will just like it will act as a bucket and it will put the lava down instead of putting the tank down uh, so let's do that and let's start filling this up to about halfway which should be about eight buckets worth. So we should have uh, maybe like eight left in here. So if we do something like that, that's a little above halfway. So it's going to go a bit faster. And uh, you can see here, it's going pretty quick. It is probably draining the power out of here pretty quick as well. Oh, it's not. We're still getting power, which is nice. I'm not quite sure how much redstone flux per tick this thing actually uses. Uh, but it's going to start tearing through the resonating ore. And then in this top tank, you can see that we have got a little bit of this uh, this resonating liquid here. And you can see at the top there, quality is 91.5. It's not quite as good as it could be because it is a little bit over halfway there. If we press shift, you can see it's at 9.2 buckets out of 16. We should have it a little bit closer to eight. Uh, and then if we look at the top here, you can see we've got 600 millibuckets out of 16 buckets worth. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it takes a full tank worth of this liquid in order to actually get a, a crystal out of it. And so this is going to take quite a bit of time. So I am going to cut away in a second. But before we cut away, let's come back up here and let's make the last piece of the puzzle that we need in order to actually produce the crystals. And that is this guy over here somewhere, the crystallizer. Uh, so the crystallizer, again, fairly easy to make. It's just some glass, some nether quartz, a machine frame, and some iron ingots. Did we make this? No. All the recipes are fairly similar, so I get the feeling that I've made this before, uh, but I don't think we have. We are out of the machine frames, but thankfully we got enough of these resonating plates to make some more. We do need a little bit more sand, so let me quickly sleep and go and grab some of that. And once we've got the sand and smelted it into glass, we should now have everything it takes to make ourselves the crystallizer like so. And then once again, uh, probably for the last time in today's episode, we are going to make ourselves another one of those furnace generators just to keep uh, the crystallizer running as well. Let's quickly grab one more block worth of redstone. 
which probably have a few of those kind of just stocked up in the system in case we need them for future recipes. But for now, let's take this. Let's head on back down. Uh, I did fill the tank up a little bit. It got down to seven buckets. I filled it back up to nine. And you can see it's already back at eight. It does take uh, quite a bit of lava to make this work. Now, the way this works is you put the crystallizer on top of a tank. Now, I don't know how it works if I put it directly on top of this tank. What I normally do is have this, li have this liquid pumped into another tank and then work it on there. Because I don't know quite how it works with the liquid being constantly pumped into the tank that the crystallizer is trying to work with. Uh, also, how are we doing down here? 7.2 buckets. It does take quite a bit of lava. We are going to have to go and re refill that pretty quickly here. But uh, if we come back up, we don't have any glass, actually. So you know what? I'm going to put this right on top of this here. So we're going to put it right there like that. And then behind it, we'll go ahead and throw down another one of these furnace generators. Do we have any coal still left in here? We got loads. Here we go. We'll throw that into there like so. And then this will start, start filling it with power. And it's showing that it's using it. So it might not actually take that much in order to create it. Let me quickly do uh, a check inside of the manual here and see if it does tell me uh, how much uh, RCL we need in order to make a crystal. Okay, so a little while later, and we're almost there. We're at 98%, 99%, almost done on the crystal. And there we go. We have our first crystal. Power left 100%. Efficiency uh, and purity is at 10, 10, and 9.99%. Uh, that's strength, efficiency, and purity, respectively. Um, I couldn't get an accurate figure inside of the deep resonance manual, uh, but looking online, it looks like it takes about 32 resonating ore in order to make one crystal. Um, but... Looking at this, I don't know how true that is. Uh, so in theory, we should have got, we should get another crystal out of this. We should be able to make a second one using all of uh, the, the the liquid that we have in here. Uh, if we can keep the the tank at the bottom somewhat full up with lava, uh, but we got ourselves a new crystal. And finally, the last bit of machinery that I'm going to make today from Deep Resonance is called the pedestal, which is really going to help with the automation process uh, for automating, getting those crystals and replacing the crystals that are already used up. So for this. Uh, we're going to need a dispenser, uh, which we can make, thankfully. I didn't know if we'd have uh, any bows lying around. We also need another one of those machine frames. Again, fairly easy stuff. And then a comparator, I think it is, at the bottom here. Yeah, we need a redstone comparator, uh, for which we are going to require three redstone torches. So let's go and grab three of those. Of course, we don't have enough sticks. That would be far too easy uh, if we did. So let's do something like that. Grab some more of those. You know what? We'll get eight, and then we'll make one more redstone torch. There we go. That should get us the comparator, and it does. And that should get us the pedestal, and it does. Cool stuff. So uh, the way that this works is if we put this down, say, right about here in front of... Oh, that might be the wrong way around. If we put it down the other way, if we put it down right about here like that. Oh, my goodness. It scared me a little bit. Uh, it's going to go ahead and break this crystal. So if, it, if an empty crystal is placed in front of it, it's going to break it. And if there is a nearby inventory, uh, so for example, if we were to grab a chest, I don't want to use uh, the refined relocation chest. Instead, uh, we'll just go ahead and make a standard spruce wood chest, I guess. Uh, if it's got an inventory near it, so for example, like that, uh, it should go ahead and break it into the chest behind it, like so. And if it's got a crystal inside of it, uh, it will go ahead and it will put it down. Like so. So what we can do is we can pump uh, any crystal that is made over here. How are we doing? 6.6. .6. Let's uh, fill that up a little bit. Uh, 7. Oh. Did I do that right? 7.6? You know, we'll go for 8.6. So what we can do is we can have all of our crystals that are generated in the crystallizer automatically sent over to the pedestal. And then once the crystal in front of the pedestal, which, by the way, can produce 235 RF per tick without any tweaking whatsoever. You can see right now at the top there, 235 redstone flux per tick. Like I said, we can tweak those uh, to get the strength, efficiency, and purity much, much higher. Right now, they're all at 10%. Uh, I believe the maximum that we can get is 20,000 RF per tick if we get 100% on all of those, which we will work towards later on the series i'm not going to do too much deep resonance all at once but for now uh, if we can just get a few of those set up 235 hours per tick is fantastic if we can make a second one here that's going to take us up to just shy of 500 redstone flux per tick which is going to be a massive increase uh, and will allow us to get rid of all of these furnace generators pretty much for good so well, let's go ahead and, and turn this on and it should last quite a bit longer as well than the one that we had before because the power is at 100 percent whereas the ones that we picked up down in the mines all had powers of like 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent they were all fairly low. So this one should last quite a while. You can see right now it's on 99.9%, 99.8%. So it's going to go down 
not particularly fast, but also not incredibly slowly. It's going to go down at kind of a reasonable pace. And all we have to do is make sure that we can produce enough crystals uh, to replace this guy every time it runs out. And so uh, the way we're going to do that is next episode, we're going to come back. I'm going to automate uh, the system of getting all of the uh, all of the simmering combs out of the apiary. And also I'm going to sleep since it's dark. Getting all of the simmering combs out of the apiary into the centrifuge, then into the squeezer with the correct amount of cobblestone, and then sending the exact amount of lava over to this tank over here at the bottom so that it's always got a bucket's worth of lava in at any given time. Uh, is this done? 77%? It's still going up. There is an... Oh, there's a little bit of liquid left in there. We should get, I think, an extra one out of there. We might have been one or two uh, all shot, but uh, we're going to make sure we always have exactly a bucket's worth of lava in here, and uh, we're going to automate the production of sending all of the stuff from our quarry uh, through to the smelter, all of the resonating ore, so we can make sure that we have uh, a constant flow of that going into here, so that we have a constant flow of the RCL liquid that we can then turn into crystals with the crystallizer. I'm going to turn this off for now because it's not even hooked up to anything whatsoever. It's just storing inside of the, the generator's the internal buffer there. Um, but yeah, so next episode, we're going to come back. We're going to automate all of that. Uh, one last thing that I would like to do in today's episode before uh, we cut away for next episode is fix the, uh, also the, 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 because of the fact that we didn't do any altering to the crystal, it does still have uh, the debuffs around it. And I might end up moving this uh, into a different room because it does still give us uh, hunger too. It still has kind of that radiation uh, emitting from it when it's on. So we do want to kind of move that uh, into probably a different room so we don't have to keep walking past it. But uh, if we head on over into the mining dimension, uh, we can see that our system is currently offline. And the reason for that is that the turbines have stopped working because the rotors inside of them have, have broken because the way the Industrial Craft 2 uh, wind turbines work is you put a rotor in them. Those rotors do have a lifespan and eventually they will break. And so you can see up here right now, uh, these guys are all offline. Nothing is happening. And that is because all of the rotors are gone. Thankfully, uh, they're not too hard to make. Are they called rotors? Yeah, they're called uh, kinetic gearbox rotors. Uh, we made iron ones last time. But we're going to make iron ones again. The steel ones and the carbon ones can produce more power but they do take a little bit more wind to get going um, and they are a little bit more expensive. For now, the iron ones are kind of the sweet spot for getting our system up and running. So let's head on back through. Uh, I did make most of the stuff and by most of the stuff, I mean the central shaft that we need for all of those rotors in our metal farmer over here. We've got three of these iron shafts. So uh, let's throw those into there. We should have uh, a forge hammer in here. We do. Let's grab a little bit of iron. And I think the recipe here is just six iron and then one rotor shaft. Let's have a look. Um, you, we need four iron rotor blades, each of which requires nine iron. Wow, that's crazy. So we need uh, 18 of these. Let's go ahead and quickly grab 18 iron plates. Once we've got 18 of those, we can go ahead and make... Oh, no, we're going to need even more than 18 because we need, what, 24 per gearbox. Then we need three of those. So we're going to need about a stack of um, of iron plates. So you know what? Let's just go ahead and grab the hammer again. We've got quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of iron, which means it shouldn't be too big of a deal for us to just go ahead and do something like that. Grab a full stack of those, or 55 of those. I think we just broke our, uh, our forge hammer again. And then we should be able to go ahead and make just a bunch more of those. I don't know if that's going to be enough. One two, oh, it was three. There we go. Perfect amount. Brilliant. So we'll take those and we'll head on back through, stick those in to the wind turbines. That should bring everything back online. And then the last thing that we can do is actually hook up the uh, the induction smelter again, because now that we're producing 235 RF per tick, we should be able to start to quickly run through all of the ores that are backed up in our system. And we should be able to run uh, both the macerator and the induction furnace, even with a couple of overclockers, now that we've got uh, so much more power coming through the system. So uh, let's put you in there. Let's put you in there and then let's put you in there how much power are we generating right now uh let's have a look at the generator 38 eu per tick not too bad 38 on each one that's like what 120 eu per tick which is like almost 500 rf per tick these things are producing a ton of rf as well which is crazy uh, for those who are unfamiliar uh, one eu equals four rf i believe if the conversion hasn't changed which i don't think it has uh, for 1.10 i'm pretty sure that it's still exactly the same so what I'm going to do now, real quick, guys, I'm going to go away real quick. I'm going to make a few more of these basic universal cables. I'm going to make sure that uh, the induction smelter over here is hooked up to power like so. I say I'm going to go away. I'm probably not going to have to go away because I think we should just be able to do something, yeah, like this. If we run this up through here, and I'm going to have to get rid of that now because I put it down in the wrong place. Let's go to wrench mode. There we go. All right. So if we put down our basic universal cables here, here, and then here, 
That should work just fine. I should start to pull Redstone Flux out of there. So we'll turn this back on. We'll come on over to our induction smelter, which should now be online. It is. That's going to get faster and faster and faster as it heats up. And over here, we've got our macerator, which we should now be able to outfit with possibly all four of these overclocker upgrades. If we put all of those in there, is it going to be able to keep up? It's not. I wonder if that's due to these. These can transfer 3.2... It says kilojoules per tick. I'm not a huge fan of the fact that it displays its output in kilojoules. Let's have a look at this thing. If I switch this to RF, I think that also switches this to RF. Yeah, so we can transfer 1.28 kilo RF per tick. So we should be able to transfer all of the power that we're generating right now, which is great. And let's also make sure that the back of this is set as an input. It is. So is that generating? Is that filling up? Oh, it is ever so slowly. The power is just running out of it as about, about as fast as it's going in. Um... I'm surprised then that that didn't work. Is that all hooked up correctly? I think it is. So that power should be coming through uh, to the macerator, which I think then should be able to handle that. Although apparently not. Let me look into this real quick. There we go. Okay, so now the macerator is running uh, at full speed with all four overclockers in it. And you can see here, the induction furnace is getting faster and faster as that heat percentage there uh, climbs up closer and closer to 100. And fun fact, actually, uh, the induction furnace uses less and less heat the higher that heat percentage is. So over time, as this percentage gets higher and higher, the induction furnace is going to start using less power than it would if it was at 1%, uh, which is actually pretty cool. So it's actually going to become more efficient over time, and it's going to become faster, which is kind of great. Uh, I'm not quite sure what was wrong here, but uh, all I've done is I've changed it. I think it's because we didn't have the uh, the configuration here on the right. Uh, I changed it up though, so now the power is being pulled out of here, going into the energy cube, and then going down and back around. Uh, the energy cube might be throttling us a little bit, yeah, because this thing is... Uh, actually, although it does say 320, so this thing should only be producing uh, 235 right now, so it shouldn't really be throttling it too much, although uh, the generator is currently full on redstone flux. 500,000 redstone flux by the looks of things, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there although this is kind of going up very slowly in terms of redstone flux so it should be outputting 320 uh, to these machines if they need it and then pulling in 320 from the generator uh, if it can which i think it should be able to we should probably look into upgrading all of our mechanism stuff pretty soon anyway like getting to uh the next tier of universal cable the next tier of energy cube just start to make things flow just a little bit easier but with that guys i'm gonna end this episode of feed the beast infinity light for minecraft 1.10 there as always if you did enjoy the video be sure to like it really does help out a lot leave a comment down down below next episode we'll come back we'll automate the process of creating the crystals from deep resonance it's going to be pretty great we did get another crystal out of here which is actually kind of fantastic we can go ahead and put that down in replace of this one it shouldn't go online until i restart it so we're not going to actually start to use this crystal just yet uh, but yeah we're going to automate that next episode it's going to be great we're going to use rf tools and i'll see you guys next time